Can I just, and before we get started, um, like talking deep diving into 2.0, are, are we officially starting? Are we waiting still? Should we do the announcement? Let's do it. We're live. Let's All right. do it. Yeah, just start Okay. I'm just- before we get super geeky about what we just saw, can I just go back to how they set the stage? Because it was by far the most brilliant marketing I have ever seen in my entire life. Like okay, tell us about it. it was, I think that was actually as much, if not more so amazing to me <clears throat> than the 2.0 unveil. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? No, please tell me. Okay. No. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Hey now. Um, okay. So this was the most amazing marketing. All right. So they had quite a feat in front of them, right? Like They promised 2.0 last year. It's been a year, right? And all of us love ClickFunnels. I mean, like I even have on my badge life, right? Like I'm, I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm not going anywhere. I think they're the best, the best option. Not just because I am like cult of ClickFunnels. I I honestly think that they are the best technical solution out there for anyone in online marketing. Okay. And, And there's a lot of people that would agree with me, but there's also like a huge, like when you start going to the masses, like you have critics, right? And we've all heard it. I mean, so in this whole like 2.0, it's not ready yet, right? Like they had kind of, you know, and Todd even said like the elephant in the room is like, what were you doing, right? But still like, you know, you, at the end of the day, you, you know, violated some trust with people. And so they're not going to trust you. Okay. And no amount of you saying like, it's here and you'll get access are some people, they're going to be skeptical about that because that's just some people's human nature to do that. Right. And, and they would be somewhat justified. Okay. So how do you overcome that, right? And this is what I mean in terms of it was the most brilliant marketing I've ever seen. What speaker did they bring on right before they went live with 2.0, right? The speaker they went that they brought on, he was a futurist and he laid the foundation speaking to all of the rebel hearts in that audience. And anybody who's with ClickFunnels, I think has a dose of rebel in them, right? So he spoke to all of those rebel hearts to say, hey, it doesn't matter that like this 2.0 functionality, we're talking about the future, right? And that technology is the mass, you know, the, the independent technology is the wave of the future. And I think in not so many words, he was like, don't you want to be a part of a platform that's like not corrupt, that's of good things, that's going to help you be independent, right? I mean, he spoke to all the rebel hearts in that audience and laid the perfect foundation for all of us to completely, I think, like dismiss the like low level functional stuff that wasn't happening and go to that like bigger invitation of the identity that we all love ClickFunnels for. And that is that we get to be independent, that we get to be entrepreneurs, that we get to craft a life of our own choosing. And we are, you know, entrusting it on a platform that we can actually, like we're aligned value wise with this entity, right? So like that to me, I'm just like sitting in the audience and I'm like, that was the most brilliant staging I have ever seen in my entire life. So it's not Russell and Todd saying, trust us. No, no, no. It's like a brilliant futuristic rebel independent you know what i mean who's saying basically like you want to be on a technology that you can actually be independent on you know and so like they're positioning 2.0 as that i think in not so many words so i was just like i'm still kind of i'm just like wow that was amazing i don't know what you guys thought about that or like if that if you had those thoughts while you were listening to that but i'm just like whoa yeah anyway. well i think yeah. like if you're if you're watching our stream right now and you're here at shl and you watched that happen like tell us like did you also feel that too so the reason why i don't know what you were talking about andrea is because i actually didn't see him speak i was in the hallway so i didn't get to oh. experience that so now i'm like but you're talking about it i'm like yeah that sounds amazing <laughs> yeah um, and yeah. brilliant for sure so brilliant. Yeah. And he was even talking about like the exponential curve, right? That you want to be a part of the exponential curve to me again, in not so many words, he's basically saying being a part of 2.0 is part of being on the exponential curve, being ahead of it. You know what I mean? And not being a laggard. Like it it was just, it was, it was freaking brilliant. Yeah. I just, I'm just in awe. We have Dave and Val in the audience. Yeah, Dave, Dave was like, it was awesome. Yeah, I, I'm just like, I almost want to replay it on slow motion to see like how, I mean, even the way that they like brought Russell on, to, like almost that the guy was interviewing Russell. You know what I mean? So it was like, it was just, it was just so brilliant. 
yeah. I don't think they could have had a more brilliant porch to like bring people back in. That is not the same old song and dance of like, sorry, it wasn't there yet. You know what I mean? It was like, it just, it, it was, you know, from left field, well, that conversation seems irrelevant because <laughs> I want to be on the head of technology. You know, it was just, it was awesome. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. Okay. Had a laid foundation. We can get into bueno now. It was just, yeah, it was just so, so amazing. Well, I was going to say that for everyone who is watching this, who has a bunch of FOMO, especially after what Andrea just said, um, you can come here to FHLencore.com and you can drop down 297 bucks and you can watch the replay. I don't know if the replay is only going to, I mean, it says here September 8th through October, or 28th through October 1st, but it also says up here, this one's now playing. Let's see what happens when I click on this. Um, awesome. Well, and the gentleman specifically that I was, I, <coughs> sorry, who <coughs> gave the presentation, um, what was his name now? Do you know? Uh, oh, yeah. It was Russell's first mentor ever. Yeah. Um, yeah. Janet? Uh, oh, Mark Joyner. The name Mark Joyner? Was it Mark yeah, Joyner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it's Mark Joyner. Joyner. Yeah. And so he talks about integration marketing. If you guys want to go down that rabbit hole and just the credit to who laid that foundation, it was just, yeah, it was just incredible. Hmm. Okay. Well, like I said, so yeah. if anybody wants to check out the replay, you can do it right here, 297 bucks. So now, now that you say that, now it's like, uh, do I have to spend the 300 bucks? And, uh. <laughs> I, well, I'm hoping I, here's. Uh, what I'm really hoping is that if I pay the 297, that I'll be able to get access to what you guys are getting access to. That's what I'm wondering. Mm -hmm. But also because I'm in the certification program, <laughs> I already put a message out to the guys and going, guys, uh, <clears throat> I think that we should get access to this too, even if we're not yeah. there. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Worst case, so I was wait till the 10th. I was going to yeah. say, like, if anything, like, is it worth 300 bucks for not saying that they're going to do this? But I think that if I were not here, I probably would take the chance of like betting that they are, that they're going to. So we haven't even talked about it yet, but base, should, we, yeah. should we just say it right now? Like what? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Today. So us that are here at FHL, we've been given full access to 2.0. Um, with all of the things that we're about to go over in just a moment, which they're calling phase one, um, but it includes way more than I think any of us expected. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we have a 30 day trial and then we are to have to start paying after the 30 days. So that's where we're at with, with things. Yeah. Exciting. yeah. Um, and I do think that at least reading the tea leaves again, the email confirmation. So um, Val, she's on the call and she pointed it out. And that is in the email confirmation, I think it's also locking in a price that's the $97 price per month instead of what we saw as a $97 a month per price. So <clears throat> pretty awesome. They might be extending the same offer to anyone who signs up for that Encore deal. So it right. honestly would be worth $300 to see and be part of that if it's going to save you $200 a month forever. Right. Yeah. Well, before that we get into it. this here, I, my, my real question is the presentation that Russell and Steve did this morning on, um, what it, was it dramatic demonstrations or whatever they called it? Um, was that, how was that? Was that a good presentation? It was I good. admittedly stepped I mean, out for a client meeting. Okay. No. So I was there for this one. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea and I like started off on things. Um, yes. so Dan, I know that you have seen Steve talk about PT Barnum before, like you've right. spoken about it at his offer mind event. So it was more of that, but, um, a little bit expanded. I would say like he went, they went, both of them kind of went deeper into it. Um, he told some stories that I had heard of before, um, told the story about, you know, the mermaid that he always tells when he's talking about PT Barnum. Or the elephant. Uh, you know, mermaid, <laughs> the yeah. elephant walking across the bridge. Yeah, so all those things. But um, they started a new thing um, where they are going to, once a year, they're going to induct a um, dead marketer <laughs> into the Two Comma Club, like a, an honorary member, like retroactively bringing them into the Two Comma Club. So they had a big cutout cardboard cutout of uh, <laughs> Barnum. They brought it out here. 
they brought out a two comic club award and they all posed for a picture did the whole picture and like you know as if he was getting the award <laughs> like they normally do so um, so i think they're going to be kind of like they're going to what they're trying to do with that is um looking at the principles that have been laid by people that have come before us like the principles are there and they laid out this framework of principles um i can't wrote it down i can find my notes i can tell you i don't know if they've laid it out this way before well Um, i don't know if you know this but they're in a process of writing a book on this subject yeah so this might be together what they're trying they're like kind of testing it out and and presenting it yeah um somewhere i had it written down but basically it's just learning the principles from past successful people and applying those like realizing like those are good frameworks like you should all be doing these frameworks they've already been created um oh here i have it right here if you guys want to know um it's a five step framework it goes number one is get credibility two is inform mass media that it's coming like building up the hype um three involve other influencers four is send the hook to traffic that you control and you're just sending the hook. You're not sending the message. You're not sending the offer. You're only sending the hook. And then number five is send the hook to mass media sources. So they used that framework and went through several examples of when PT Barnum did it, when they have done it, like even before they realized that this was a framework, like this is, they realized like, this is what we do. If you don't do this, then you're missing out on a lot of money. I'll be honest with you. I don't think they did this on purpose, but essentially what you just read off is their launch of 2.0. Yeah, no, I'm sure they did it on purpose. No, I meant, I mean, That's- the lay it out way in advance and then, you know, don't do anything for a while and set the hook and the whole thing. And like, <laughs> I don't think they did it on purpose because I got- I'm not sure that part. Part. That's interesting. <laughs> sure. uh, That's really interesting. Yeah. <laughs> As you're reading that off, I'm like, oh, huh, it sounds like the launch of this thing here. <laughs> uh, now, before we go any further, I don't know what else the girls want to talk about here, but before we go any further, full disclosure, this image I have right here on my screen, I'm pretty sure everybody in the room today was told not to record anything. This image is actually on the ClickFunnels official site. So I figured if it's on their official site and they haven't pulled it down, it's fair game for us to talk about it. Public. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, yeah. otherwise we'd just be like, you know, making things. Up. I'd be like drawing stuff on the screen or something. <laughs> uh, um, is there any way that you can zoom that in, Dan? I, I, I got it maxed out. Okay, cool. That's, yeah, all right. Um, so I guess what you're seeing is they broke it down into, for now we're, we're switching gears. This is ClickFunnels 2.0. So what you're seeing is what they're calling phase one. And the first thing that I noticed when this graphic got put up on that giant screen was the center icon right there that's like the gear with the colorful stuff in the middle of it um yeah that uh right next to that is like that little white <laughs> triangle coming off of it in that triangle it said today and, okay. and, and they were clear this is a timeline I'm like oh if that's today that means everything in phase one is now like it's happening now so like i was freaking out before they even started talking about it i'm like that is like they're gonna like all this is ready for us um and then yeah so we can talk about what all is in phase one and then we can talk about what's not showing on the screen right now well i I could tell you having been in the certification program and having accidentally seen a few things um (laughs) i can verify and well some of it was just glitches that actually appeared that shouldn't have stuff like that so i can About the only thing I haven't seen any hint of at all was the analytics. Definitely mm-hmm. had not seen, or, or the funnel of, follow-up funnels, to be honest with you. They are really either. Yeah. Um, but everything else, including, to be. including the payment gateways. Okay, wait. You just like lost over that? That's huge. That is so huge. Like, yeah. I, I mean, and I think that this is a really hard concept to, uh, for people to understand, especially people who are just beginning. Because... At least from my experience, I have one client that um, he specializes in payment in merchant services and payment gateways. And 
he, I mean, usually after you either make a crap ton of money in a really small amount of time, or you start to make over a million dollars, you're going to run into problems in terms of your funds getting helped. That this is a known thing that happens amongst all entrepreneurs. Russell was talking about it today, right? So there is a very, very massive real pain point with funds being held. So, you know, this payment AI, I think solves that immediate problem point, but this is what they didn't talk about. Do you guys know who is behind the payments AI? Well, okay. First like, of all, that, it? We kind of we kind of jumped into the payments AI thing without really I know, I know. explaining okay. what it is or anything. So we're starting basically at the tail end here. We're starting at the very yeah. last item on the page right here. <laughs> should we yeah. should we just leave that as a <laughs> Okay. Well we'll we'll leave well, it as an open loop and start from the yeah. beginning. Well my suggestion <laughs> yeah. would be first off, how did they go through the presentation? And I suspect they probably started left to right like most of us English reading people do. <laughs> Um, so funnel hubs right well, now. Let's write a board. Yeah, funnel hubs oh, right sure. now. Oh sure, we can go traditional, Dan. Yeah, let's I know, do it. I know, not like you. Um, so <laughs> funnel hubs is the, the only thing that all of us have had available to us up to this point. <clears throat> so why don't you guys go from there? Okay, well, well, and I and think, and yeah, go ahead, Susan. I was just gonna say, and <laughs> blogs. They don't have blogs on that graphic, but it's with kind of included with funnel hubs. Yeah. Yeah, I think right. funnel. I think funnel hub and blog are going to be interchangeable. Um, certainly. Well, yeah, and um, but they did announce like when they were talking about that. In you know, we we've talked a lot on the show about you know they have standalone pages, theme pages, and site pages, and it, the architecture still doesn't really make sense in my brain. I get lost in there a lot because um, it doesn't. It just doesn't quite make sense yet for me. Um, it hasn't clicked. But they did talk about on standalone pages, you know, right now we have a very real pain point whenever we're building anything. But if we pick the wrong funnel type of step, then some elements are not accessible to us. So we've all been in the situation where we built a beautiful page that's like an order form page and or like a sales page. And we couldn't actually add our checkout event, right? Because it wasn't an order form page. So the they did talk about how um, that connection in the current architecture that it's very hard coded and that a funnel step type is very, is linked to only a certain set of elements that is no longer the case and that you can use standalone pages so that basically they become templates that you can plug any element into, which is a huge time saver and awesome. So they, they went into that a little bit more when they were talking about, um, uh, funnel hubs and blogs. Yeah. Um, I think that's one thing that's, though, that's a huge thing. Yeah. One thing though, did you guys um like I'm in my 2.0 right now and I don't see many changes. Do you guys? Well, I'm not in my 2.0. I would suspect you guys had to go through some sort of super secret link in order to then supposedly upgrade. I I have did. We did, but in the email there's no link to that. Um You just got it. You did? It okay. Just- Oh, all right. Val's over in the corner and she said she just got it. So that it's coming. It's coming. Okay. Literally 30 seconds. Ago. Yay. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, okay. Okay. So, so we work our way. What's the next? So we got funnel yeah. hubs. Uh, yeah. The next thing on that timeline is click funnels, which is what they're just, it's not funnels, the funnel editor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so now, well, yeah. did they mention is the funnel editor? Because up here at the top, we have the page editor, which realistically must be what we currently are seeing. They didn't say that the funnel editor is different from the page editor, or is it? I mean, I imagine it just has new elements, but it looked the, like it looked the same in terms of like over on the right side and, you know, the same, you know, same UX it, you know, are similar UX to what we've seen with the funnel hubs. Yeah, because what I've seen also is where you have the, the you have the standalone the themes and then the site. The next tab over is actually funnels. So again, I would yeah. guess because they're all coming from the same place, they gotta most likely be using exactly the same editor. It's just that more now maybe when you click on funnels, you're gonna get more elements that you can put in. And so, so you click on funnels and all the blog elements will go away and the funnel elements will come in. That's probably what we'll see. Yeah. As it does. I mean, you could, in theory, you could put a checkout form 
inside of a blog page. Uh, mm -hmm. So we'll see if they allow you to do that or not. I don't, you know, for me, honestly, a page is a page is a page. The only thing that would be different with funnels in particular is to be able to use a different URL for each one of the funnels or a different domain for each one of the yeah. funnels. And then, you know, go through systematically like you would in a funnel, but then still have the funnel functionality inside <coughs> the blog. That would be uh, super cool. And that's one of the heartburns that a lot of people are having right now is that with your workspace, they're calling it, you get one domain. And the one domain, realistically, and I've, I've said this to people, I said, you know, think of it in terms of WordPress. With WordPress, you had one domain and you built the entirety of your blog inside of that one domain. But we're also mm -hmm. having, you know, 100 funnels with 100 different domains in them. And so I think somewhere there's got to be a dividing line in there to say, okay, the funnels, you could have multiple domains, but your hub, your blog, that's a singular domain. And that would make sense to me. I don't know. I mean, Susan and I were talking about this too, though, and that is the domain association at the site level. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. what I'm saying. It's like you can only, currently you can only assign one domain to your all your pages. You can't go in and assign some of your pages one domain and some of your other pages as a different domain. Like it doesn't let you set it at that level. So right. pretty much whatever domain you set up in your account is the domain that you're going to be using for everything that's in your account currently. Um, I did ask. Sorry, sorry, I'm getting like hot off the press. In, entry in <laughs> we just have you come on in a second <laughs> Actually, so. Um, so I was just saying that I did ask like about the multiple workspaces multiple sites in one account and while they that I was basically told um that's a future thing but right now you can only have one per account it's a one for one right now yeah yeah again like I said so basically think of you got one blog and in your blog, you can put in your posts and you can put in, so you got your blog posts and your blog pages into your blog, but then the set, the funnels would be basically something different. Although they're using the same editor, um, the funnels, you're going to hopefully have multiple dom domains or they're going to have a lot of unhappy people very quickly if you can't have multiple domains. But yeah, there is, I know there's agency accounts coming and I think the agency account is where you're going to be able to build multiple blogs, multiple hubs, all inside of one singular account. So, But I think that there's people that are not agencies that would still benefit from being able to put multiple sites in one account. Okay. People, have, entrepreneurs okay. traditionally, like the definition of an entrepreneur is you have more than one business, which means more than one domain assigned to each of those businesses. So even without the agency stuff, like pretend like that's just not even what we're talking about. Like just the ability to be able to add in multiple sites. Like for me, example, for example, we're using my account for our CF 2.0 geek out stuff. So that means I cannot go put my own business into my account right now because I can only put one domain in it right now. I mean, I can add more than one domain. You guys will see, you'll be able to add as many domains as you want, but you can only set one active domain for your site. Right. And that, imagine and, that, limit it. and that as of right now flows through to every single page, whether it's a standalone yeah. page or a right. site page. It or homepage or whatever, all those you you said at one time and it lumps them all in together. So we'll yeah. see uh, we'll see how the funnels are going to be different and then how long is it going to be <laughs> before you could have multiple workspaces. Well, the only wild card though in too is like if they do connect the domain to the site, right? And it's a one to one, and that's the pricing model. They also introduced the URL redirect tool today. So like, I mean, it could be that you only have one site, but if you just do a URL redirect, then you could easily get around, you know what I mean? Whatever domain you wanted to use. Mm, okay. I'd have to, I'd have to see that. Yeah. We don't yeah. know enough. I don't, right. Yeah. Um, um, but let's get, yeah. wait, I think there's a few more things to get to with that. So we'll come back to the URL, re URL reader. <laughs> yeah. um, Andrea's jumping around. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, Shocking. Okay, so we talked about 
funnel editor. That's the click funnels on that phase one. We know that there's a page editor. That's what we're using to create the pages for funnel hubs currently. Yeah. Um, the next one on there is follow up funnels. Yeah. And we do, any of sorry, not to cut you off, stuff. Susan, but yeah. just for folks, like be checking your email because like Val just got access to hers. Um, to her new, the new 2.0. So it's coming, they're rolling out. So does that mean our, our existing accounts that we have right now, Andrea, it's not going to be like, oh, next time you log in, now you have all this stuff. Like we're actually having to go log into a new place. I don't know, because I mean, Val had one from before. So yeah. I'm going to guess that it just is a, you, your email association and maybe it'll just update with a refresh. I don't know. Hopefully, because I mean, for people that have already built stuff, yeah. They're not going to want to rebuild that stuff. Right. Um, yep. No, and, and also just to be clear for anybody who's watching this, who does not currently, who I'm going to say, who is not currently at Funnel Hacking Live, you will not have the ability to upgrade at this point. Right. Only people who are at Funnel Hacking Live until October 10th is the date I've seen now. Yes, they did update that because it was October 4th. 6th, 4th. Yeah. Um, so they did update that officially in their presentation that it's going to be October now. So. Okay. Um, yeah, but we don't know what that Encore thing is going to bring either. So you might want to go sign up for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. So then moving on to the follow-up funnels, which we know is emailing. I'm, I was like shocked to see this up there on <laughs> yeah. And if you guys, I mean, uh, if you guys don't yeah. know me, so like I, I should say I am an avid active campaign person. I have almost a hundred percent of my clients on active campaign. Um, I, I would consider myself a power user of active campaign. I'm an affiliate of active campaign. Like I really believe in an active campaign for a lot of reasons. Um, and I, even what I saw today was like, I think I might be able to tell my customers that they can use this instead of active campaign. Like again, proof is in the pudding, but based on what we saw, I'm, I'm impressed. Yeah. 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 I wrote down some notes um, uh, for follow-up funnel, uh, follow-up funnels specifically, there's going to be the ability to do split test emails. So mm -hmm. basically, you know, if you're familiar with active campaign and the workflow of active campaign, and you have like your splits and stuff. It, it basically, the screenshot that they showed us, it looked like that. But instead of it being, a, maybe they'll have both capabilities, but like an active campaign, you have like conditions. Like if this is the situation, or if they have this tag, or if they bought this thing, send them this direction. And if not, send them this direction. So it's similar to that flow, only it's split testing. So it's like you're testing like, let's see if this set of emails is performing better than this set of emails, which is awesome. Like that's, that's well, I, really I, think cool. it, I think it's, I think it's even bigger than that, Susan, because you can't yeah. do split testing in active campaign right now based on email impact, like, e like click through rate and open rate, right? Like that you yeah, can test, yeah. but the hardest part of the whole equation, and this is true with Google analytics too, is it's not connected to the conversion event. So like you have to do all mm -hmm. these like duct tapes, right. To say like, okay, yeah, I know that this was more successful from a click through rate and from an open rate, but when it comes to a conversion event, right. You have to get really creative on like, how can we make sure that this is attributed to this conversion event? And how can we like make sure that like a 3% conversion on our funnel can actually be connected to this email campaign, right? Like it's very, very tricky. And it's same with Google analytics, right? Like, yes, you can do site tracking and yes, you can do UTM and yes, you can like connect all the dots. You could pay so much money for things like wicked reports and things like that to associate with the conversion event. But at the end of the day, our conversion is happening in ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is the brain of the conversion, right? And so now what I saw in there, it was like not just split testing in terms of open rate and click-through rate. It was actually attributing conversion to the split testing of the email campaign. That is like, if you are a copywriter listening to this, you should jump on that like I don't know what metaphor is appropriate these days but like you should be on that because <laughs> that is so appropriate that is these so days huge yeah. right 
Yeah, I mean, and I think what that does is it raises the bar for copywriters in terms of like no longer, I think, are at least funnel hackers going to hold you accountable for open rate and click through rate, right? Which like to me is typical copywriter. Like now it's like, no, 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 I can actually have a, a legit conversion rate conversation with you. That is huge, huge. And I think that's really the, like, you know, we think, at least in my brain, and I think in some of the other people that I've talked to about, like, well, why do you want an all-in-one platform? And it's like, well, I don't want to have to pay money for all the platforms. Like, it saves me money. It's just, it's easier. And I think that, like, this is taking that to the next level and that if, if you have everything connected so seamlessly together, all in one place, and they can com- communicate true data to one another, you have like real, they keep calling it real time data. And we mm-hmm. haven't gotten to the analytics part yet, but there's, it, there's going to be so many metrics that you're going to be able to see and use just because of everything being together in yeah. the way that they're building it. Yeah. And, and Val in the comments asked, I think the million dollar question, that's not just related to the CRM aspect, but everything, you know, and I think Susan and I are going to keep getting it. And that is, can I get rid of this and go to 2.0? Right. And like, what's it going to take? And so um, we'll talk about that in general, but specifically with active campaign, like how would I feel comfortable saying, Hey, I really think that it's legit and you could get rid of your active campaign and come over to 2.0. What I would need to see happen is like, in active campaign, I live in the context area, being able to filter, be able to slice, be able to understand the customer journey, being able to see like who bought what, and like, let me give you a report. And what does that look like? And how can I create an automation so that, you know, whatever situation happens, right? Like there's a lot of these features in active campaign that again, I think is in 2.0, but it's what we saw is we saw a lot of the, um, automation part, which I think is amazing. We didn't see a lot of the CRM aspect, right? So the CRM in my mind is like, I can go in and I can look at my contacts through any slice dice feature that I need to, in order to tell you what's happening with those contacts. Right. And it's not a multi-list strategy, which is just not a good strategy at all, which is what the foundation of Actionetics was, right? It's a list strategy, which is just, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Like, Tags over lists is why I love Active Campaign. So, and if you if you really look at like most of the blogs out there that are talking about CRM strategy, most of them will tell you that a one, two, or three list strategy at most is the best strategy to have, and that you should do tag management over list management. I could get on that soapbox for a really long time, but all that to say, that's I mean, it, you know, answer to your question, Val is. Like for me, I do think the automations, at least what I saw today, look really promising, but I want to dive into the CRM aspect and give that proof test of like, okay, can we look at it through any lens that we need to in terms of filter? And I can tell you what's happening with your customers. So I can tell you like this many people bought this thing. They also bought this thing. You know what I mean? Like this is the many people that like did this lead gen, all of that um, would need to be in place in my mind. Yeah. Um, Uh, It also raises it like, Oh yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say to your point, just so that everyone is aware and on the same page, that follow-up funnels and the CRM thing that you were talking about are two separate features. Um, we yes. already know about the CRM from the first time they were you know, taught, telling us about CF 2.0, but we do know today, like that's not part of phase one, that's part of phase two. That's a future thing. There's Which one, are, is, which one are you thinking the, is the future the, one? The CRM. It's not That's not what I'm talking one. about. Oh, yeah, you're talking about the CRM funnel. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Okay, um, because you keep talking about the CRM aspect of it, and I just wanted to make it clear, like the CRM feature of ClickFunnels is not available right now and won't be. No, no, no. Oh, this is, yeah. So this is actually really good, Susan. So let me let me define what I mean by CRM. So I'm not talking about like pipelines or opportunities or anything like that. What I mean by CRM is that I can go into a central repository where all of my contacts live and I can look in at it, look at that list, just like in an active campaign, if you go to contacts, right. Yeah. And I can see either like in mass, I can do bulk action on my contacts. I can, you know, do filters on those contacts. I can, you know, do whatever I need to do in terms of understanding who is currently in my database and I can initiate action based on that, that database. That's right. what I'm meaning by CRM. And I do think that it's available in 1.0, like, or in this first release. Okay, well, I think, yeah, no, I got it. 
Yeah, I think to some degree it has to be because in order to have, in order to have sales, in order to have purchases and to have the follow-up funnels, you definitely got to be collecting whatever information from the client. Now, I mean, a CRM may go to a much greater level about creating future sales and all this, but they're going to have all the information on your existing client and what they did and then the follow-up funnels and the results of those follow-up funnels. But the question Mm -hmm. I really had was, so if this is basically doing away with uh, active campaign and Zapier, because you need Zapier in order to send all the stuff. No. You don't need it. That's a direct integration. Nope. It's a native okay. integration with the okay. funnels. So, all right. You're just getting rid of just active campaign then. How much would yeah. that save everybody? So at a minimum I mean, right now, most, yeah. I mean, if you have, you know, they, they don't think they have the 500 contact plan anymore, but like 500 contacts, it's 15 bucks a month if you pay month to month. Um, but a thousand, I want to say it's at about 25 to 35, depending on when you came in. Um, and so that's, you know, and then most people though are over a thousand, like the average for a lot of my customers between 1500 to 2,500, um, in terms of what they pay, which is again, uh, about contact. 79. Yeah, but, they're, but they're paying what it's only like 50 bucks a month then 50 to a hundred bucks a month, 50 to a hundred. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's not that much. Um, okay. it depends because like, you know, I have a client that has a 12,000, 15 uh, going on 15,000 email list right. and it's like 200 bucks a month. So I have, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Same. Yeah. And I depends. think that's the interesting thing, right? Is like, they didn't talk at all about like getting, needing to charge people by the contact level, which is one of the gripes that a lot of my clients have about active campaign and rightfully so. So I think that's interesting. That it's a really interesting play. Well, and the, the other thing that's interesting in here is the ability. I don't know if it's active yet, but you're supposed to be able to have the ability to upload all of your videos. So you could do away with Vimeo and Wistia Vimeo. and all that yeah. nonsense, especially with Vimeo nonsense that they, they make you jump. Through. Yeah. But then the other day, uh, Russell had a podcast where he was talking about his, his acquisition from Brad Callen of Voomly and the rest of the at, uh, suite of products, Toonly, Doodly, and all that. And yep. some of the stuff that's in Voomly, whether I think that, you know, they're going to keep Voomly as a standalone product, but some of the stuff you can do in there where you can basically build video funnels mm-hmm. based upon yeah. what people do while watching the video, um, you can send them to other videos and other sites and all kinds of stuff so not only do we have funnels so here but we're also going to have video funnels yeah so cool so go yeah, get yourself so a boomly cool. account while it's still yep. cheap yep yeah okay should we get to the next one that all of us probably are like the most interested in well i think the membership sites thing we've pretty much been seeing those for the last year or so. was there any updates no. no but they've said they said a couple things today that i really like picked up on so they said they, I don't know if you caught it, Sam, but they said that basically um, that it, you could do anything you wanted to in membership sites, like that it is infinitely scalable in terms of what you can do in there, which caught my attention because that's not normal language for ClickFunnels, right? Like they don't, they, that's not something that they usually, um, I mean, they talk about it in terms of like, you can do whatever you want from a marketing perspective, but my interpretation when they were talking about membership funnels is that like you can make a membership as complicated as you want it to be, like as complex as you want it to be. Oh. And I was like, that I, is not normal language. Yeah, go ahead. They, what they, I, I wrote down. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. I wrote down what he said because it, I did catch that too. I was like, oh, yeah. this is good. Um, he basically said it can be as like as simple as you want it to be where you're dragging, drag and drop, like drag and drop what you need in there. Um, or it, it's as open, it's open enough that you can make it as complex as you want it to be. So he was like, yeah. basically, like, if I decide I want to go create this crazy thing, and I wanted to do like all kinds of cool things, like, I can do that, because it's, yeah. op- it's the, the structure of it is open enough. And like, I mean, when, when we look at it in comparison to what we have in 1.0, like there is no open, it, you're, you have what you no. have there out of the box you have what you have there's no openness to it it's like mm-hmm. no you put in your lessons this is the structure we're giving you this is how it's going to function you have a little bit of design customization but that's it so it's like completely different yeah. um, which i mm-hmm. I, mean, we're, I know we're excited about <laughs> um i don't know i'm gonna yeah. i'm waiting to see that because uh, from what i've seen 
compared to one, I mean, and, and having been working in the editor quite a bit, especially the last couple of weeks, um, I don't see how it can be any different realistically than, uh, than 1.0. The only, the only thing I would say is because you have to, because each one of the lesson pages is going to be built as an individual page. So that's probably what they're talking about there is the actual content on the page. So you know how you build the lessons separate from the page inside of ClickFunnels and then you just drop <coughs> You drop in the element to show the the content, show the to show the lesson. Um, what they're probably talking about is you can def- design the entirety of the page differently, and that because mm-hmm. every every single lesson is going to be its own individual page, you can design every single one of because everyone has its own unique URL, and so because of that, you could design every single page to look different. But then that goes back to the standpoint of from moving somebody through a customer through a journey in a learning experience like that, you probably wouldn't want every single page to look different. No. Oh, no. So I think you're right, Dan, in that like I think most people when they're gonna think like, oh I can go and make it look any way that I want to, I think you're on the right track of that. Like they can organize their content any way that they want to. Whereas like in 1.0 we we are so we have sections, we have pros. Um, we have columns, we have elements still, but you're still like, especially without, you know, your, um, what are they called? The, to make the, to make our editor window full, like full width, <laughs> you know, when you open up a lesson to edit it, it's like, it's a super oh, narrow yeah. and you gave it. What are those called that you created? <laughs> well, it's 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 um, known it's it's known as a book oh, it's known as a book a bookmark book book well, yeah. book yeah. yeah. It's known as a bookmark. Yeah. What so, Susan what Susan's talking about is I made a bookmark that you can click on it where <laughs> and normally a lesson inside of ClickFunnels 1.0 is really narrow. I just built a bookmark that makes it go full with screen. So, so you got when you're see, editing. Yeah. So just so it's a little easier to edit it. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, like, there's still there's limitations. There's limitations in the lessons in 1.0. So, um, but what were you? Gonna, I'm interested in what your thought is, Dan, on like how it's not really much different from 1.0. Well, because the essentials of the editor are virtually the same. You've been in both, and each in each one. And I've looked at the HTML, and the HTML is basically uh, identical. And so you take, like anything else, you take your section, you drop in your section, you put in your rows that has a certain number of columns, you put in your elements. The With 1.0, one of those elements is the content that pulls in then dynamically whatever lesson is that you're on. So there is a limitation there in that there's a particular element that has to get dropped somewhere onto the page and then all the stuff from the lesson goes into that space. Now you can make that space as big as you want, but you know, a little bit of code, you can make it look like, feel like whatever you want, but there is a limitation there. So I can see how, and, and otherwise the rest of the design around it will stay the same lesson after lesson after lesson. But if what they're saying is, okay, well you can design every single lesson completely differently. You know, this one, this lesson can have a red background and the next one can have a green background and the next one can have unicorns on it. And you could have, you know, your video at the bottom instead of your video at the top. And you can put your, your navigation from the left on this one to the right on this one. But again, from a membership (laughs) standpoint, I don't think that's a good idea. No. (laughs) So I guess time will tell, like we have to get in there and play with it and see like, because we've seen the, um, we, we've seen the user side of it. We have not seen the <coughs> building an editor side of it. So we don't really know what it looks like yet. I mean, if, as everyone starts getting access, that's your FHL. We can get, we're going to be able to get in there and start looking at it. So, well, I think that, I think the, how it's going to look is it going to look just like the regular page editor because every page again is built individually. So for every single page, you might have a template you're going to start with. So you're going to build your template and again, just standard stuff. Let's say on your template, you put the navigation down the left-hand side. Well, for every single lesson, then you're going to open up that same template and it's going to have the navigation down the left-hand side and the navigation will be dynamically, um, you know, dynamically loaded up based upon the URLs that you say are to be associated with the membership. 
So you're going to build mm-hmm. your five lessons on five different pages, and then you're going to go into your navigation or however that they're going to be connected. But somewhere you're going to say, okay, I want these five lessons in this particular order, and I want them to show in this navigation element. Mm-hmm. I would suggest so, how this is going to work. So, I, yeah, I, I think based on what we see, how the blogs work, I think it's probably going to be similar yeah. to that. And I think that's what you're describing and that you can, you can create your template pages. And when you go and make a blog post, you can assign a template page to the blog post. So you could, I think you probably could have multiple designs of pages and then you would just assign it. You, like you said, you wouldn't necessarily want to do that inside yeah. of lessons that belong to all one no, I think, I think that's a perfect but, example is with a blog, yeah. you could make every single blog page or every single blog post look totally different. But again, that's not what people are used to. You go to your blog on, you know, how to do knitting, your knitting blog, and you're, you know, you're used to a certain structure and everyone comes up and you just go there to consume the content that's within that blog. I think the same with membership sites, for the most part, you go there to consume content. Now, unless we start making this even more experiential somehow, um, I don't see, and I don't even know how you would do that. Andrea would probably know something like that. But um, so, I don't know. I'll let your little brain spin around for a while on that one, Andrea. And then when you figure out what it's supposed to look like, let me know and I'll build it for you. (laughs) (laughs) I think I I want to hear Andrea's thoughts for sure on this. But I think like we can sit here and speculate all day long, but we have the ability to go in and look at it. So I think we just need to like, not at this moment. But we're going to get in there. We're going to show you. Um, I know in each of our groups, Stan, we're streaming into your group. We're streaming into our geek out group. Like we're going to be showing you what this looks like when we're, you know, back home, have stable connections and we can share screens and we can share what this looks like. So just like wherever you're at, wherever you're watching this at, like just stay tuned. We're going to be showing you stuff. Um, Well, and I don't know about you, Susan and Dan, but like, you know, we've been doing maybe once a week in our respective groups, right, in terms of updates, just because we've kind of been on like some weeks we're like, gosh, what are we talking about? You know what I mean? What's new? Um, But I think right now that needs to accelerate. Like to me, it's at least three times a week where we're in there actively trying to do stuff because I know, again, I know, Susan, you're in the same boat that I am in that our clients are actively telling us like, do we move over? Do we not? Right. I mean, because even if you got in today, you know, you're still going to be paying for 1.0 and 2.0. They did say that 1.0 can go on pause, but at least what I know about pause is like, you can't do transactions on pause. You know what I mean? Like, so uh, I don't really I don't, know. What the benefit of well, pause is. they said, uh, I don't, I mean, there's pause, but then they said originally a year ago. So who knows what's changed. <laughs> is that you were going to be able to have a different level where basically the funnels would keep running, but you couldn't add any more funnels. You couldn't add any more pages or something, I think. So you know. I thought that I heard them say that again today, but I maybe was just hearing what I wanted to hear. So if anyone watching, it was there and you're like, yeah, I definitely heard that. Like, please let us know in the comments. Um, and we can confirm that. I can get that confirmed by somebody. So, um, I, yeah. What's what's next? Do we, I mean, because I think that's without actually getting in and showing membership site stuff. I don't know. Is there anything else to say about that one? No, I think I think that's what we really just dive into, which will be exciting because I mean, we're you know we all specialize in high end membership areas, and so I think that'll probably be where we'll really dive in. Um, what we've been waiting for. I have to say. <laughs> Right. I know. And I have to say, before we go to the next one, there was something that happened today that's not on this timeline. That's really important. Right. And I felt a little bit validated, to be honest. But I was like, so Todd basically inserted about three slides. Right. I'm going to go back into my pictures. So one of the slides that he inserted is that he did confirm that they built 2.0 with an open API. I can't express how huge that is. And if you have an inkling of software development in your bones, I would be creating apps to go on this platform now. Like it is so huge. If you are an API developer, I mean, it might even be worth it in your, you know, whatever entrepreneur business that you run to be looking for an API developer <laughs> in order to get something on 2.0 because it it's just huge. And so um, he did confirm today that they, you know, that they have an open API. Yeah. Well, um, I, I will show you guys this yeah. because again, I 
This was openly available on, yeah. on the interwebs. Open API is part of phase two. Yeah. But, yeah. but the way that, but the way that open API works, right. So they had to have constructed it. Like whenever somebody is developing code, right. Like, and they're developing like a feature, for instance, be, in order to have an API available in an open API system, you actually have to programmatically add that when you're adding that feature. Right. So to me, when they say open API, they may open up the ability to get those various endpoints or to get the documentation to leverage the API. But I guarantee, I mean, he even said that like he, this stuff is 80% complete, but like it's there. I mean, it, it is not like a new thing that they're developing, right? Like they had to have baked it in when they built it, which is just, again, it's huge. It's huge. Well, they were talking about that already uh, at last year's Funnel Hacking Live. No, they, they never no, confirmed they about the open oh, API. Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, yeah. they didn't. I, you were suspecting. I, I will bet money. I'll right. find it. I'll you find were speculating. It for you. I'll find it for you. <laughs> yeah, we knew that. Um, we knew based on the little apps thing down in the corner, and um, we see like marketplace stuff all over it that we couldn't, you know, access anywhere. But um, yeah. Well, so the I'm. So I'm showing. Uh, yeah. Let me just say this real quick here. So I'm showing phase two. Uh, I was going to, I was thinking that, and I was like, well, because I want people to know what's still coming so that you're not saying to yourself, oh my God, you know, what about this and what about that? Well, okay, if you're looking for cart funnels or stores, so basically the e-commerce stuff, that's still coming. When is coming? I doubt they made any They comment. did not say. Okay. No. Yeah, so they're going to have a built-in affiliate system no. of some sort, the open API countdown funnels, whatever the heck that is, uh, CRM funnels and internal apps and conversion boosters, again, whatever that is. Um, so those are whenever, maybe probably next Funnel Hacking Live uh, because they're going to have, with all the stuff that they're dumping on us in the next couple of weeks here, they are going to have so many help tickets they are going to have yeah. so many bug reports. They're going to have so many feature requests and they've already got probably, uh, you know, a hundred feature requests that they're dealing with already. So they got yeah. a lot of work to do over the next year. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Do we step back? So back to, back to phase one, there's two more things left on here that we haven't really well, dove into yet but yeah before, if you have something before we move yeah on. before we go there because there was two more things that he said before they got to analytics so the one that he mentioned was global products um and then he did you know we knew that we had heard that but he confirmed it again and again that's huge for us to have a central location for us to manage products um and see how they're doing and then the second thing that or the third thing he mentioned is a url redirect which I thought was really clever. So for thus for those of us who are more technical, I don't think that we really, I'll just speak for myself. I don't put enough emphasis on this. To me, it's like URLs are a part of the game, right? But all of the like more marketing conscious people that I work with, they very much, I oftentimes the conversation goes like this, Andrea, I have a podcast, Andrea, I have this presentation that I'm going to make, Andrea, I'm going to a conference. Hey, Andrea, I'm going to make a presentation, you know, at X, Y, Z. And I want to be able to just say this URL, right. And then that it just works, right. It has to be something that's easy to say and easy to listen to and easy to type in. And of course, like we have the conversation of like, okay, great, but you know, like this is the URL, like, okay, we can do a redirect. We could do a bit.ly link. We could do right. Like we get all clever in, on the tech side of like, I know this is what you want, but like, really, let me just give you a QR code. Like, come on. So this is, was so interesting because I think obviously Russell's the marketer, right? And he's like, he said exactly that. I want to just be able to like go in and get a URL and then like type it in and say whatever I want in that moment. And it still points to the right spot. And that essentially is what they've created. It's called a URL redirect where basically your marketing person can go crazy with the cheese whiz in terms of whatever URL they want. They want to preach out into the world, right? And then they can still not totally mess up your, um, you know, how you have set up your paths and your domain structure um, for a given funnel. So I thought that was super cool. Well, yeah, the thing is, is actually all that's already built right into ClickFunnels 1.0. 
there's zero uh, redirect yeah, in you 1.0. Can do, yeah, you can. Yeah. But not to the not, level, I don't no. think. Yeah. No, yeah. it's pretty rudimentary. It, it's pretty yeah. rudimentary. Okay. Like, so oh along God. with this. I'm telling you guys, you can do it. Okay. Well, along with this. You can. Yeah. But it's, it, it, yeah. I mean, it's pretty simple. Yeah. Yeah. Also, I also wrote down, so they were talking about your re redirect. So you also are going to have the ability to do split testing URLs. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I wrote down was UTM parameters connected yeah. with that as well. Yeah. So it should be yeah. probably a lot simpler. Well, they still, they have the, they have the split testing. They have the UTM in uh, one uh, Split testing pages, split testing right. URLs. And I still don't fully wrap my head around what that means. But it's yeah. not just split testing your pages like okay. we have so, at one point out. So you create a split test and you give one, you know, mydomain.com and you give the other one susansdomain.com, but they're the same mm -hmm. page. Yeah, exactly. Or something. So you, all your split testing is just the domain or the yes. subdomain or whatever it would be. Did it come out of my mouth easier and did people hear it and use it and do something with it? That's what they're testing. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So like yeah, pretty much like it feels like Russell's like dreaming it up. Like I wanted to do this. And they're like, okay, let's give that to Russell. Like, I wanted to do this. Okay. Let's yeah. figure out how to give that to Russell. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm telling you though, like, I don't know how many countless conversations I've had just beating my head against like, what did you just say in the podcast? Ah, oh, crap. You know what I mean? And like, <laughs> oh, all right, let's redirect. <laughs> okay. So then next on my list that they went into yeah. was the analytics, which is the next thing mm -hmm. on that phase one graphic. Um, I think pretty much we, I mentioned it earlier major benefit of having all of these services all in one platform is that you're going to get actually accurate, correct analytics because you can get the correct data. It's not just guessing based on, um, you know, outside sources giving you that data. It's like, no, this is all connected. We know exactly what the conversions are. We know exactly uh, all the right information to give the correct information. Um, and they it's pretty much the said, of yeah. Truth. yeah, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Say, say that one more mm -hmm. time because I was talking over you. No, I just said, and it's connected to the source of truth of conversion. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it's data right from the source. Um, yeah. and I think we can expect to see everything that we would want to see in analytics. Like they started, I think they, it was this where they were, they put up a, a screenshot on their slides of like, a whole list of here's all the things that you can track and like that we're going to report on it. I it, it was such yeah. a tiny written list and long list that even my camera like picture like I couldn't I still couldn't read it so I didn't really but it, it was they listed off some of them um, and it's everything you would expect that you're going to be able to track. Yeah. So yeah. Yep. Well, and I, I want to go back here because there was uh, one thing that Andrea dropped and uh, we we didn't even really pick up on it because it goes along with something else. And what she said is global products. So how it had yeah. been in 1.0 is every sales funnel you built, you had to recreate the products. Now yeah. you can create your book product. So I'm selling dot com secrets. I'm assuming I wrote it myself and uh, I'm selling my book. And I can just create the product one time and I can connect that to 57 different funnels and sell yes. the book only created one time out of 57 different funnels. And then the other thing you can do is let's say you built an OTO page and it's working great in funnel number one. And you say, okay, I want to use that in funnel number three and funnel number seven. And all you yeah. got to do is just clone that page basically or I don't even know if you got to clone it. You can take that page and you can put it into the funnel stream that you built and just run it right through that OTO. So OTO, this OTO is working great. I want it at the end of every single funnel from now on. And click, click, click. Well, and you can put it into every single funnel what without I'm really having to rebuild to the page. Right. What I'm really interested to see with global products is not only like it does, it's amazing. I have a central repository to be able to control my products, right? 
um, and see how they're performing. What I think will be really interesting is if I could go one level deep, say I'm selling this product as an OTO here, as a main offer here, as a bump over here, as a downsell over here, you know, and I could see like which one has the highest conversion on that particular product in the way that I sell it. That to me is what opens up there too, which is really exciting. Yeah, because I mean, we're going to be able to see all of the data and analytics associated with those uh, placements of that product, and right. but have it all be connected to one product rather than it being like, well, I have this product here and I have this product here and I and this like sometimes you get like so many of them duplicated because you have it in so many different funnels and you like lose track of like well you have to like start clicking through all of the funnels and looking at all the data and then like compile it all together and like figure out like where is it performing the best and it's it's just going to simplify everything. What I would guess is also going to clean up the problem that we have sometimes, especially with membership sites where we, if you're, if you're ba basing the restriction on the product, uh, you start off with one product and well, then you go, okay, well, I'm going to do a three pay and then I'm going to do a six pay and then I'm going to change, change how it works. And I'm going to change the price on it. And pretty soon you got 12 products all of a sudden in there. So hopefully yeah, that click on every single that. one of them. But that's why we <laughs> yeah. always have to just set a tag because it's like, otherwise you run into trouble real fast. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you can never delete a product because then you're going to lose all your data. So like you, yeah. you know, I don't know if you guys like CF Pro Tools has a tool that you can hide a product. You know what I mean? Because as soon as you delete your product, all the data is gone with it too. It's horrible. I don't. Yeah. I get, well, I guess you can, yeah, you can delete a product, but you can't delete the sales of it. The, the sales will always stay in the data. Right. Oh, like, so if you don't, but if you're deleting <laughs> a product from the order page to like prevent people from buying that again, like you're right. losing the uh, like the like the tag the access that people had right. the per the purchase is no longer associated with people anymore because so, right. like, you have a bunch of orphan it. records that are like yeah it's a nightmare yeah so yeah so um, if you can so you can go to go to a page now and you say okay you know here's here's my main product and here are my two bumps and you just go click 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 and put all three of them in place and then later on, you say, man, bump number two isn't working very good. So let's pull up bump number two and let's put in a substitute bump. And that's just a matter mm -hmm. of going click, click. Yeah. Instead of having yep. to rebuild everything. Yep. It's awesome. Um, they also said with analytics that they're going to give us their reports. That's huge. Yeah. So like, that's there'll be reports, but, thing, right? right. Or no, they're no. going to give us the same reports that they look at. That's awesome. Yeah. And then again, what's the timeline on that? I mean... They, I, it's, and, not, it's a conversation I that spoke, I don't think it's too. the, the, uh, this conversation that the three of us have had many times is that we all got access to it in one way or another in back in like March, I think it was, and it was horribly broken. And I started really looking at it again about 30 days ago or so, and they had made massive improvements. And since then the, the amount of improvements, I mean, it's daily. Every day I yeah. go in there, there's something that's working better or fixed or, or I don't know, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys saw it, even just something simple as in the, the style guides, you used to be, you had to set everything mm -hmm. in rems. Now you set it in pixels, but it shows you the corresponding rem next to it. So it dynamically yeah. creates that as you put in your pixels and it's just like, yeah. you know, that's so much easier because we're so used to using pixels. And they have some of yeah. the sliders just in the last couple of days, you guys may not have seen it because you've been busy. Um, just in the last couple of days, some of the sliders they've changed. Instead of going, there, there are some of the sliders that you could like make a, a, a right right margin on something like a thousand pixels. And so they're, they're fixing that and, and other ones that should be like going by twos or fives, we're going by ones or even tenths or something. And so they're cleaning all that up. How it got built that mm -hmm. way in the first place is a bigger question than, um, you know, the fact that they're fixing it now. Because you'll. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I misspoke before reporting guns with analytics. Um, yeah. And like what Andrea said, just in case you missed that, was basically Russell said, like, any, or maybe Todd said it, any of the reports that they actually want to have in their business that they need to create for their business, they're going to give us the ability to create that same report for our businesses. Man, makes awesome. sense. The code's already been written. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. All right. Okay. Final one. Payment one last thing. Yeah. So now we're yeah. getting to the final payments AI, which is where Andrea wanted to start. 
but yeah. <laughs> glad we left it till the end. So what the heck is that? <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't express like, <clears throat> I don't know how much you guys have had to deal with. Um, so like, you know, there's all these different models of payment, you know, recognition, right? Like we're all pretty familiar with like one-time payment, subscription and payment plan. And then we have to pick a particular payment gateway. If we want to add both Stripe and PayPal, we have to use CF Pro Tools. PayPal is like the most horrible pain in the butt and it's a horrible user experience. Like the current understanding and use of payment gateways is again, pretty rudimentary and painful. So basically my understanding of what Payments AI is, which let's find out who owns Payment AI because I have a theory. So the Payments AI, what it is, is it's like a layer over top that says, don't worry, you don't have to worry about all the complexity of being a merchant service. We're going to do that for you. We're just going to be that intermediate so that now you can choose whoever you want as your payment gateway. You can even split it. Meaning like, you know, that problem that I said in terms of like, if people make, you know, a significant amount of money in a very short amount of time, they will get their funds held. Well, now this allows you infinite flexibility in terms of like, oh, okay, for up to 10,000, I wanted to go to PayPal. And then the next 10, I want to go to Stripe. And then the next 10, I want to go to NMI or whatever it is, right? Like they can actually control that, which is huge. Um, and then one of the options is you can also use Payments AI as your merchant service. Again, who do we think owns Payments AI? Do you know the answer to that? Oh, are you are you alluding to like was it acquired? <laughs> yeah. So, um, if you were a billion dollar business and you saw the billions of dollars that were getting processed on your platform, <laughs> that would be a pretty good us. move to be a merchant service <laughs> on top of a platform that publishes there that you know generates that amount of transactions. Like I. It's so brilliant. This is my theory. Yes. And um, okay. yeah. so that's, on your, that's your theory, but um, huh. where <laughs> there's a payments.com. Right. I couldn't, I, I did a Google search of payments AI. I couldn't find it. Payments. So who owns payments no, AI? Not, payments not, dot I mean, it could be payments.io maybe, um, but. I, I couldn't find it right away. I did just a quick search. So, okay, while you're looking, Dan, some other highlights for folks who are for listening. So the other highlights is that you will, I talked about payment options. Um, you also will be able to manage how you want the, um, basically like if, car, if credit cards fail, which is a really big problem, especially with subscription models, right? Like, what do you want the rules to be? Like, do you want to charge <clears throat> again in three days? Do you want to wait a day? Do you want to be more aggressive and just cut it off? Um, or do you want to try a backup payment plan if they have it on file? Or do you want to try a lesser amount to try to keep the transaction? So pretty much they have, you can set up whatever rule you want in terms of handling failed payments, which is huge. Um, and so that was pretty awesome. Also managing subscriptions um, was all in there and like a more calculated way to manage subscriptions gateway routing they introduced this this term called dunning which again is like the like where do i want to route that money um and then how do i want to handle the failed payment pass so anyway it was it was i mean i think payment ai and like just the, the pain of payments like at least for me right like stripe still does it for me because of where i'm at in my business but i do think that like once you start to get to higher level numbers and faster amount of money coming in, I think you need to get pretty solid on what your payment gateway is and your merchant service in order to, you know, make sure that your funds don't get held. And so it's just okay. yeah, pretty impressive so, that they took that on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a couple of things that you didn't mention that I think are huge. Yeah. And I think there's yeah. specifically a lot of people in our group in particular that are going to love this. Um, okay. So these, <laughs> I don't even know which one to start with. So first thing is that one of the uh, merchants that you can set up on payment AI is Coinbase. So you would oh, be yeah. to accept cryptocurrency that is yeah. run through Coinbase specifically in your transactions if you so choose. So you would be able so to- So all you crypto nerds, 
Yeah. You got to shout out there. Well, okay. <laughs> that, that immediately sends a trigger into my brain, which says, okay, how do you then, when somebody gets to the payment, <sighs> they get to their checkout and they want to buy your book for seven ninety five. Do you give them an option to click on to use? Yeah. You can yeah. choose. So crypto. you get to enable or disable any and however many you want to. And you can offer all of them probably. If so they're you, you got 12 different options here and you can pick one of your 12 different options to so, do your payment through. So they, yeah. they showed like, so payment AI, if it's its own merchant, Stripe, PayPal, um, mm-hmm. Coinbase, yeah. and then... Is my did I get it right? Karma. Yeah. Oh Karma, yeah, that was awesome. Huge. We should talk thing. about that. Yeah. Yes. So Karma is um, a service that provides financing. So if you hype like, to get people in the audience. Yeah. So like payment plans, but a financed payment plans. So if you're serving a customer base that they can't afford your high ticket stuff and they need to finance it, it's like all built in. Hmm. Huge. Um, that is. It is huge. And then the other thing is that Payments AI supports all countries. Because I know yes. that people that do not live in, you know, the United States, North America, probably your I don't even know how Europe is handled. Like, are there issues there too? I don't know. But I know that there's a lot of you out there that live in countries where you're like, I don't know what how to set this up so I can start accepting payments from people that live, you know, in different countries. Um, so they said literally all countries they're like however many countries there are that's how many countries like they were trying to remember the number um so it supports all countries um yeah. I think that's that's awesome huge um and then Andrea you mentioned gateway routing but you kind of breezed over it yeah gateway routing is you you did kind of mention what it is before but not in connection to that so um if you wanted like 50% to go to Stripe and 50% to go to PayPal. Like you can do that. That's also the load balancing, but I think those are separate ideas, right? Like mm-hmm. gateway routing is like the actual, like someone makes a purchase and you want 50% of their purchase to go one place and 50% of the purchase to go to another place, right? Am I understanding yeah. that correctly? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then you can set volume limits on gateways, which I think you mentioned that too. Yeah. That's all that I have written down. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's pretty much it for me too. Yeah. Overall, I mean, I was just, I was much more impressed. You know what I mean? It was what, it was more than I even thought. So. Yeah. Now the fun begins of seeing how much of it is actually functioning. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Uh, One thing I was always curious about though, is like watching the audience reaction. People weren't going super crazy. You know what I mean? Like not your typical crazy. And I'm really, I'm wondering, (laughs) you know, I think people have maybe a little bit gun shy um, because of what happened last year. So it'll be interesting to see how this rolls out. That. And I think that like some of the things I think that people just don't understand the magnitude of like what they are about to be given. Like, yeah. Which again, I think why all of us are gainfully employed, right? Is because like we nerd out on this stuff. And so our clients don't necessarily need to like, but I can with confidence say, like I was starting to get a little skeptical about like go high level was starting to do some pretty cool stuff. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. That is pretty cool. You know what I mean? But like now after seeing what I saw today, I'm like, no. I'm still made the right sure. choice. <laughs> Quick funnels all the way. Yeah. Back when they first the last FHL, when they were talking about CF 2.0, and I, and I don't want to jump ahead because like they're still rolling this out. We still haven't even like gone in there and like actually built the funnel yet. But yeah. they said like when we're done, there is no competition. Like yeah, there will be yeah. no competition. Like this is going to be the new standard. And I, I mean, were taught in, that. Yeah, taught in so many words is basically like. Yeah, it probably wasn't good that we rolled it out, but I'm not really worried about it. You know what I mean? And and after what we saw today, I'm like, yep, I can see why. <laughs> they don't care. Yeah. Um, yeah. One other yeah. thing that I just found in my notes, which I was like really excited to hear because it's a problem that a lot of people deal with, is and this came when they were talking about the page editor. Um, the the uh, new editor and 2.0. has the ability built in to auto optimize your images. So if you are uploading like 
huge image and you really only needed it like 300 pixels in the past in 1.0 it would be taking that huge image and compressing it during page load which is slowing down the load time of your page um there it's going to auto optimize it so that will not be an issue moving forward in 2.0 and it does it for huge images getting scaled down to small images and also mobile so i was like yes because so many people don't like take care of that when they're putting mm -hmm. their images on their pages yeah uh, that's so true it's like an inconvenience it's like i don't yeah. want to have to go and scale this down i'm just gonna upload it <laughs> yeah and they did something really ballsy i mean they ran a live speed test during the session that um that was ballsy and yeah exactly dan what you're seeing here yep yeah and i put in my email address, but I don't want everybody on the planet to see that. So yeah, uh, so. Um, let's see, let's share that URL with everybody. Can you, um, uh, read it yeah. Out? What did you, you, cause you sent me something earlier. Uh, I did. It was a QR code and then it had the URL on it, but I don't have it. I yeah. Okay. Really so this is so. funnels dot my click dot com slash page dash speed dash opt in. Oh, dash 51 B okay. zero zero. No, 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 no. I think it was just um, funnels.myclickfunnels.com slash speed, if I remember right. I think it was just slash speed. Yeah, or speed test or something. I mean, you can pull up my message in the messenger and see what I have sent you, but. Um, yeah, I can't. I can also share that into our group. I'll share that into our geek out group, and Dan, you can share that. Into yeah, your group but it but it, it brings you to this page here, and they're showing that basically they're perfect. So we'll we'll see. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I got confirmation from my my secretary over here. <laughs> She's handing me notes like I'm you know like you're on you're on the news, and they're like handing you like breaking news. Um, <laughs> but it is flash speed. Um, also, let's see, I think we did mention 30 day trial. Okay, so on October 10th, when it is launching to everybody publicly, Public. yeah. they're also launching it with the Your First Funnel Challenge. So the first yeah. thing that they're going to have everybody do is go through the Your First Funnel Challenge, where before um, we were like, I think they were saying Funnel Hub Challenge first. Yeah. And I really think that they were just doing that because that's what they knew they were going to have ready first. But now that we yeah. have all of it, I think they're like, okay, no, we're going to do funnel. Um, so the the funnel will be rolling out with that when when the. So you're saying that uh, basically they're going back to what they gave us a year ago, where you had the four different options for the trainings, and so now they're revamping that, and we're just going to do one. So are there? Yeah, I mean they one? didn't. They didn't mention any other challenges. They only mentioned today the, the funnel challenge. Okay. So we'll see because don't they, they also have a <laughs> don't they also have a product called Your First Funnel? Um, no, they've been currently doing like a replacement for one funnel away challenge, which is kind of similar, but that is not quite what it's called, I don't think. Is that what it was? Your first funnel, start now. Yeah, so so they have. Oh, it is. Probably yeah. the, I thought it was like. Oh, it's probably the, It's probably the same, but they said that, like, for us here at FHL, we're getting that we're getting into that challenge, the VIP level of the challenge for free. Um, but it's probably the same challenge. Yeah. Maybe they're updating it a little bit. Or they're just making a completely new challenge for two point oh people, but the only way you can get access to it is you actually have to have signed up and and purchase two point oh in order. <laughs> get the training and the training might be just for 2.0 then. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. There's another something really important that I think that we should keep coming back to again and again. So in order to be category king, Russell usually says that you have to be able to articulate your problem that you're solving. And I think that that is probably the single hardest question to answer in any business, right? The clarity of the problem that you solve, not motherhood and apple pie, but like, no kidding, this is a problem I solve right? It is, it, I think it is a very difficult question. Um, and so it was, oh gosh, maybe like six months ago, I was at an event and Russell was wrestling with this question, right? Like he, I don't think he had the answer yet. Like what problem does 2.0 solve? Cause it, it's not the 1.0 problem, right? What problem does 2.0 actually solve? And he shared that today. And which is like, I think 
it is so profound, this problem. So he said, the problem that 2.0 is solving is that we don't have customers. Okay. If you think about that, that has platform ramifications. That has a, I'm stealing traffic. That has a, he even dropped today that he's like, he makes more and converts higher with the organic than he does paid, right? Or with like affiliate or something like that. I really think that their like visionary plan here is to be like a Facebook platform. It, it is, it's not just platform in terms of open API and open market. It's like, it's the people part of a platform. Um, and just that it, like, I think they're going to start to go after, you know, oh. the pain point of traffic and how do you do that? And I mean, I don't know. It, it's exciting. I was like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing problem statement. And how lucky are we, I think that they're starting to tackle that. I mean, it's a huge problem, but it's like, they, it's good to see, like, they've realized, like, we can tell people to build funnels all day long and they can be building the funnels, but there's a traffic problem. People do right. not know how to right. get their message out there and drive right. traffic. To their, yeah. Right. How many clients have you had to say no to? Cause you're like, I can't help you until you fix your traffic problem. Yeah. Like, or yeah. I've tried to fix it in a lot of different ways and failed. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah, traffic is a real problem. Well, one yeah. of the things, uh, you see this all the time in the ClickFunnels official group, somebody will put in a post, it'll say, hey, I just got done building my funnel, how do I get traffic? Right. Just like, oh, you should have started on that right. a year ago. Well, and I think <laughs> I didn't understand that until later on, right? Like, yeah. I'm like, well, you need a funnel anyway, so I'll buy you a build your funnel. But now it's like, no, I won't take your money unless you know what your traffic strategy is and you have it dialed in. Like. You don't need a funnel until you know your traffic, is my opinion. Well, yeah, I think we were I, you know, talking last, last I, was, I think I was talking to you last week, Andrew, or somebody, and it's like, you know, maybe, maybe it was on the certification calls or something, but it was, uh, it's something that Steve Larson says all the time. Well, he, he does now that he's, he's, um, uh, you know, he's grown some over the few mm -hmm. years, obviously grown enormously over the years, um, is that the last 10% of building the funnel is actually building the funnel. Right. It's the, yeah. it's the first 90% that is what gets you there. And part of that 90% is having done all of the pre-launch stuff and having put the word out there, just like he was talking about today, apparently with uh, the PT Barnum <laughs> stuff and, and uh, Susan showing us our notes. I guess I don't need to be sharing my screen. It's anymore. backwards. Okay. I think my notes are backwards. Okay. Well, <laughs> put, it, put like, it back up again. Put it back up again so we can make We've it. We talked about it at the beginning beginning of this live, the five framework structure that he shared. And that is everything that needs to happen before you start building your funnel. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's yep. and that, that's exactly it. So you got to get the awareness. You got to get, you know, again, we can go back to the P.T. Barnum story. You know, why why did he buy an elephant and have it tilling the fields next to the train? Because he knew that every day the reporters would drive, you know, come back, go, come past it on the train every day. And they all started writing about it. So yeah. he needed to get the buzz going ahead of time. And so the last, the very last part of it was, okay, now we're going to do something with this elephant, which I forget what the heck it was that they did with the elephant, but um, they did that. I mean, it's the same thing. Uh, this, there's a great story about the guy who who invented steel, and I think he built the Brooklyn Bridge, and people were afraid to go across the Brooklyn Bridge. And so he went to the circus, probably P.T. Barnum, and said, hey, um, how many elephants you got? And they're like, you know, whatever. We got 20 elephants. It's like, great. I need them on Saturday because we're all going to march them across the bridge just to prove to people that the steel would work. Amazing. Right? You got to do all that. I mean, it's just a horrible example from a marketing standpoint, but you got to do what you got to do ahead of time. And then the last part is build the funnel. The funnel. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Yeah.